Welcome to Student Hub Live. This is our fantastic Wheel of Ologies quiz. If you're brand new to the Open University, this is perhaps something, well, it is something unlike anything else you'll ever experience, but we do it every six months because it's heaps of fun. Um, and it's my favorite time of the day um, because I get to have a nice chill break and spin the wheel and try my best to do the scores because our quiz master is the fantastic Dave Rothery, professor of planetary geosciences, who'll no doubt give a plug for his module. And we have some great teams in the studio, <laughs> But of course, you at home are going to play alongside our studio teams. And let's see whether you win again. And HJ is going to be um, uh, feeding all your responses in. How's everyone? Are they super excited? We're doing very well. We're very excited. It has taken some time, but we've come up with a team name which kind of combines everything. And what is it? So we decided to be called Team Cabbage Cake Ghost Kitties, the winners. And we think they should address <laughs> us as such every time he comes to us. <laughs> Te team what? Team, <laughs> Sorry, team cabbage cake. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it a bit slower. <laughs> team cabbage cake ghost kitties, the winners. I don't know if the winners bit is a bit preemptive, but we're quite confident. And of course, everyone can play at home either using the live widgets just to the left of your chat box, or just put your answers in the chat, and uh, we'll see collectively how we do. I do need a lot of help myself, so please. <laughs> Why are they saying do we get a hee haw? Uh, because we decided on such a fantastic name, of course. Oh, right. No, you don't. <laughs> and it's very collaborative and it's very, very good. Um, so, yeah, that's great. But, Team Home, you'll fall down on the scoring again, whereas I'll be doing it in the studio. So that's your challenge, to see how many uh, <laughs> correct scores you can get and, and try and work those out. That'll be the big thing for everyone at home. Dave, welcome. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Dean's Quiz. Doesn't time pass by quickly. <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, on the S111 module team, so any S111 20B students, special big hello to you. Anybody who's going to do planetary sciences next year, S283 is a wonderful course. So that's the plug. <laughs> in time are, that's so <laughs> let's, let's meet the teams. So on my left, the Apollonians and their captain, Jess. Please tell us who you are and explain your name. OK, well, we're the Apollonians and we chose a classical mythology inspired name because I'm in, from the classical studies department. Um, Apollo is the god of music and sun, which was kind of appropriate because we have a musician, Bob Samuels, and I was going to say a sun specialist. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. Mercury is the closest planet okay. to the sun, so I'm almost there. <laughs> OK, Jack Wright. So that's us. Very clever name. OK, and... Um, on my right, I don't know if you're meant to be the predictors of the predators. <laughs> the pre Shane, please explain this strange name. I'll explain. So we are the predators. As a, a, we're all editors, firstly. <laughs> um, um, so intentionally, we've spelt the word incorrectly. <laughs> um, which never happens here, which, at all. No, exactly. So this is Anna, also an editor. Like I say, we're all editors. And Sonia, and I'm Shane. Um, I'm also a student at the OU studying S217 at the moment. And I've also got my lucky hat on. I'm just <laughs> reminding all students to dream. Dream big. What's S217? Is that physics? Yeah. Oh, I thought so. Yes. My school. Yes. Oh, well, OK. <laughs> One point. No, Dave, we're not doing that. We're having points per correct answer, as per usual. So, that, yeah, we Googled predators and we found out it was um, a combination of producers and editors, which we agreed with because many students may not know how hard we work um, to create brilliant module materials and then how amazing you guys make it <laughs> when you edit it and combine it into something that really makes sense for the students. So it's brilliant that you've come along. Thank you. Okay. And you will be playing along at home as well. HJ, have you said all you want to say for now? Uh, yeah, we're still trying to work out the scoring system. We reckon we should start off with 10 points for having the best name. Um, <laughs> I think that's been vetoed already. We'll, we'll, we'll get some extra points in somewhere. You've got the most illegible name because I tried to write it down as you were saying. <laughs> that's sort of yeah. your fault though, Dave, really. <laughs> I think we're about ready to go. So, no, yeah. the... It's a general knowledge quiz. There are six categories of question, all written on the wheel there. I'll ex they're all ologies, sort of. I'll explain what each ology is the first time we, we meet it. So I'll ask Karen to spin the wheel and we'll see what ology it lands on. Um, not yet. Oh, I will yeah. ask I've you. Been I've been wait, wait, since wait, six that, this that, morning that, for that. That one doesn't count. Oh, but it's a pistology, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> He'll love it. <laughs> 
his and, favourite. And we will... All right, well, the first question will be an epistemological question. I will read out the first epistemology question, and it's multiple choice. It's either A, this, B, that, C, the other, or D, something else. And whichever team buzzes in first gets to tell me what they think the answer is. And I need to know A, B, C, or D. And you'll be playing along at home as well. Can we just hear what the predator's bell sounds like? OK, it's a honking horn. I said boing and a honking horn. OK. So, we don't need to spin the wheel. It's been pre-spun. So, epistemology is the first subject to come up. And epistemology is the nature, sources and limits of knowledge, it says here. So, your first epistemological question is... The largest constellation in the sky... <laughs> All eyes on him. <laughs> oh, he's a physics student. A, Indus, B, Ursa Major, C, Perseus, or D, Hydra? OK, Ap Apollonians? I'm guessing, I think we're going to say B. And B is? Ursa Major. I think Ursa Major is that big. Well, Lee, well done for having the go, but you're wrong. <laughs> it's bigger than Ursa Minor. <laughs> Do we get a an attempt? <laughs> we will go for D. Which is? And why do you say that? It's a Big snake. It's generally a big snake, so yeah. maybe it's a big... It, it is. Well, it is the right answer. It's, it's, right. it's the water snake, and it measures over 1,300 square degrees. Very good. Um, all right, bonus question. What's the smallest constellation in the entire sky? No, no, no just tell me the answer. No A, B, C or D. Is it the Pleiades? Pleiades is not the constellation. Oh. No. Nope. Cabbage, cake, open cluster. cabbage cake donkey constellation. <laughs> Do you want to go? <laughs> yeah. Sonia, uh, tell me. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we thought it might be like... Uh, what? Ursa Minor? <laughs> Well, that is smaller than Ursa Major, yeah. but <laughs> no, it's the smallest sky is the Southern Cross, Crooks Australis. Smallest oh. constellation is Southern, the Southern Cross, Crooks Australis. So, no bonus point. We have one point. HJ, how do they do at home? Did they know their hydras from their other constellations? Well, Sam, Libby, and, uh, Sam, Libby David and Gemma were straight in there. They uh, knew it was Hydra. Uh, me and Tyler just had absolutely no idea. I think Victoria's got a bit of an edge because she knows someone who works as a space archaeologist, which just sounds brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so, do they get a point or not? Because some knew it, but we didn't decided all know it. because the majority said it <laughs> correctly, majority. we get the point for that. <laughs> okay, all right. We work as a democracy so at home. <laughs> one point to Team Home, one point for Predators, and null point at the moment to the Apollonians. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll spin the wheel again. And see what we get. Oh, zoology. Zoology, and which is... Perfect opportunity to talk about cats. <laughs> <laughs> the study of animals, supposedly, but when we see what's on the cards... <laughs> the <right>. fourth <laughs> largest lizard in the world, the Parenti, can move up to speeds of... You've got a choice of four here. Is it A, six miles an hour? Is it B, 17 miles an hour? Is it C, 25 miles an hour? Or is it D, 32 miles an hour? <laughs> Predators. <laughs> I'm going to say C, which is 25. And how do you arrive at that answer? <laughs> Another guess. Yeah. Another guess. It's correct. Okay. Well done. Oh! <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it well, but, um, I was thinking of a tactical way to play it, to, to make them to yeah, make yeah. a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got a three in one chance of getting it right, and they've only got a one in four chance. Yeah, yeah. that was the idea. It anyway, didn't, work out this time, didn't did it? It's twice it's not worked out. <laughs> uh, the Parentes native to Australia, reaching lengths of over two meters. How do they do at home? 
Uh, well, Gemma and Sharon, they got straight to it. And uh, me and Darren have decided to put in all the wrong answers just to balance it out a bit and make sure that the teams in the studio don't feel so bad about how rapid right you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's have a different ology. <laughs> All right, ninjology is the study of ninjas. Random bonus point questions. Questions relating to, questions relating to ninjas remain elusive. Yeah, so, there's no yeah. questions about ninjas no, in this one. It's just, it's just <laughs> another different set of questions. So here we go. Pay attention. Your first ninjological question. Which of the following was the first DreamWorks film? Was it A, Shrek, B, Ants, C, Madagascar, or D, Sinbad? I, just, I thought it was Ants. Which is, which, which one was Ants? B. Yeah. Well, ants was, was Ants B. You think it was Ants? I thought it was Ants, Why do you yeah. think that? Um, I remember Ants from when I was... It's the first DreamWorks film I remember, I think. Yeah, you're right. One point. Oh. It was... Ants was released in October 1998, followed by the Prince of Egypt in December of the same year. Yeah, so it would have been 11. Don't rub <laughs> it in. <laughs> <laughs> Did they know their ants from their elbows at home? It does seem so. A lot of uh, film fans, so uh, Eva and Sam straight on it there. <laughs> David as well. Um, I, I wasn't too much sure myself, but we do work as a team, so I'm, yeah. Overall, they balance me out. Just, okay. I, I'm just relaying everything here. I don't know anything. Okay. <laughs> so how many points have you got at home, then? Um, so far, we're at four. We've awarded ourselves a bonus point. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, <laughs> we'll see. There might be some more bonus points coming up for us. So and what was that. your bonus point for? Um, the for the Southern Cross. Southern Cross. Oh, right. okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. That, that, mm. I'm trying to keep track so it seems okay. fair. Now, come right, on, it's Jess. It's 3 nil in the studio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, uninhibited buzzer tactics from now on. Okay. All right. Right. Which ology would you like, Jess? Wherever it lands. Oh. Okay. Etymology. Oh, yeah. The study of words and their origins. <laughs> this should be classical, though. Your yeah. first. <laughs> What's your period, Jess? Um, it's a very restricted period between 420 and 422 BC. Oh. <laughs> Hard luck. <laughs> Which one of the following words was, in, was added to the Oxford English Dictionary in 2018? Oh, <laughs> was it A, nothing burger? Was it B, typogram? Was it C, sprummer? Or was it D, firenado? <laughs> Go for a D, Fire Nado. Why do you say that? Because I've only ever seen Fire Nados appear in the news relatively recently. So no. that's the wrong answer. Oh. Oh. Come on, let's get it right for 4 0. Uh, what was the third one? I can't, <laughs> can't remember what C was. C is C, <laughs> B is B, and A is A. Nothing hmm? burger. Go for it. I'll take the nothing yeah. burger, typogram or sprummer. Sprung. Right, yeah. Are we going A? Yeah. Go for A. Just because it sounds more fun. Before they give the answer, Dave. Yeah, I good, but what, do, what, do, what does team home think it is? Because I think they only do it retrospectively. We, we reckon it's typogram. That's There's our no points to team answer. home, then. Because oh, yeah. oh. the correct <laughs> answer is A, nothing burger. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's something that is or turns out to be insignificant or lacking in substance. The uh, example of the phrase is just a big nothing burger. <laughs> and, and I'm not looking at you. <laughs> Hashtag who? Lifelong learning. That's oh, yes. what's happening here. <laughs> so it's 4 0. Very good. Yeah. Everyone all right at home, H. Shay? We're doing all okay. We're working out. We think we should get a bonus uh, point for effort on that question. No. Yeah. no? <laughs> we'll get these points from somewhere, I'm sure. I think that's the thing, Dave. We keep asking Team Home, like, afterwards, and a retrospective yeah. answer can be changed. That's a good idea. <laughs> Agnotology, but, but, but 
field of human ignorance. Yeah, this is a slug game. <laughs> are, are you good at human ignorance? What happened to the star Beetlejuice in late 2019? Is it A, its colour changed from red to green? Is it B, it was re reassigned from the constellation Orion into the constellation of Monoceros? Is it C, it grew brighter, causing speculation about it going supernova? Or was it D, it grew dimmer, causing speculation? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're going to go for C. Which is? Uh, that it's brighter. No, full answer, full question to... Oh, you don't want the full question. <laughs> we think it grew dimmer. I think 37% dimmer than recently. It did indeed grow yeah. dimmer. And if you go out and look at Orion tonight, you'll see the start of top left Beetlejuice. It's considerably faint than the one at the bottom right, Rigel. You know, it's gone we have very a bonus faint. point as well for that percentage she threw in? <laughs> no, because it might be wrong. <laughs> it's not but, wrong. <laughs> but there is a bonus question about um, uh, the wrong answer D. It was reassigned from Orion to Monoceros. Now, Monoceros is a real constellation name. What animal does it signify? The narwhal. No. Rhinoceros. Oh, my. Is it my? Did you say minos? Monoceros. Unicorn. Unicorn. Don't get the what do you think it might be, Predator? It's going to have to hurry you for an answer. Um, Anna did say it's unicorn so just before Jesse. Oh, it's a yeah. unicorn. <laughs> yeah, but you've already had your shot at the bonus. Oh, you know, Control yeah, your sorry. team. Okay. <laughs> Classicist, monoceros, one horn. Yeah. It's, it's Greek, not Latin, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, don't uh, okay. the I need to put up But for this. one point for getting okay. the right, uh, right description of what happened yeah. to Beetlejuice and one point here for the bonus, right, so one, one each. Point. All right, fa fair enough. Any for points home, team home? Um, well, no. Sharon... <laughs> Sharon was quite good. She got straight there with uh, D. We do think um, uh, a unidonkey is better than a unicorn. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if we get any bonuses for that, but I think it's a fantastic idea. Libby w does want to know what will happen to Orion if uh, Beetlejuice goes supernova, do we know? Well, nothing, because the stars in Orion aren't in fact close to each other. Beetlejuice is a long way from most of them, so what it'll look different. Though, if it's not recognised that we've got a head anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Beetlejuice means the armpit of the Great One. It's Arabic, not Greek or Latin. <laughs> so he hasn't got a head anyway. OK. It won't change the constellation boundaries. Learn something new every day. You yeah. do, yeah. you do. Yeah. You do okay, you. I've had an idea. Next question, we should ask Team Home first and then hear their answer. Oh, no. and, then, and, then, and then don't tell them it's right, and then ask the studio audience, Dave. OK, we can we'll do try this. that, yes, OK. We've got to let people... But Oh, yeah, they're going to want to buzz in, first one in, we can't do that. I'm sure we can think of a way. Let's, uh, well, but let's I've got just, a really bad cold and I just can't think straight at the just, just, just spin the All wheel. Right, OK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't go off piece, Karen. Right. Uh, there we are. I'm let's do that again. again. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Which is all ignorant. Random. OK. To show. Right. What is whistle jacket? Is it... A uh, big supplier of emergency flotation devices to the airline industry. That's A. Is it B, a French protest organisation? Is it C, a painting of a horse? I think it's a painting by George Stubbs. It is indeed. Did you go and see it? Yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, normally in the National Gallery. It's been in Milton Keynes since yeah. November. I think it's gone now. Um, were they quick enough at home to recognise what this all jacket is? I think Libby 
got in there quickly and uh, she said, see painting of a horse. Um, a lot of us haven't quite got to our answers yet. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know if that counts or not, but uh, Libby, you did, did a good job there. <laughs> well, uh, well interrupted there. Um, yeah. So that's, we now six one. We are, we're about halfway through, Dave. Halfway through. Would you believe it? Well, we'll stay as All we right. are for now. <laughs> <laughs> Another question <laughs> while we're at it. Oh, it's ninjology. Ninjology, study of ninjas. Approximately how many cups of tea are consumed daily in the UK? <laughs> Is it A, 70 million, B, 135 million, C, 165 million, or D, 210 million? <laughs> We think it's B. Uh, was that 135 million? Yes, it is 135 million, but, but that's the wrong answer. Oh. It's not oh. B. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> more, more tea than that. A bit more 165 tea. 165 million, that's yeah. correct. Yay! Yay! Yay. Um, bonus question. How many cups of coffee per day in the UK? Um, I'll give you... 35 million. <laughs> no. <laughs> more I'll than give that, you 10 it's our national drink way. now, isn't it? So, what do you reckon? 210 million. 210 million. Oh, it's only 70 million. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, at home, are they au fait with the tea drinking habits? Uh, we were a bit split on that one, to be honest. Uh, we no, thought we'd do better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did think we'd do better as students, you know, as we're always caffeinated. But, uh, yeah, not quite with that one. We can get the next one, though. We can do it. So that's more than twice as many cups of tea as coffee, isn't it? <laughs> Learn and live. <laughs> Spin right. that wheel. Pantology. Oh, that's everything, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Jack, where on the moon did the Apollo 11 moon landing take place? Was it A, the Lake of Hope? Was it B, the Sea of Tranquility? B, the Sea of Tranquility. How did you know that, Jack? <laughs> well, I, I might have a professional interest and I, and I might have been killed if I didn't get it right. Yeah, but, uh, we'll I also know it because I remember watching it. Ah. Mm. Did they know that at home in time, HJ? Uh, Lovelyn did, straight in there. BC of Tranquility. Uh, we reckon we're at about eight points now, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you are. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, other op the other options were going to be the Bay of Success or the Land of Manor. None of those other three wrong ones know. exist anywhere on the moon, do they? <laughs> Um, so the point. score is six three. The score is six three. Can we get a point because I remember being um, uh, allowed to go late to school in order to watch it. Yes. Only if I get one as well, because I also watched it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can both have one. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> so six three. Carry on. Still one at one point per answer. Let's see okay. what we. Zoology. Zoology. Your next zoological question. The British submarine HMS Trident played host to what animal for six weeks during World War II? This is really zoological, isn't it? <laughs> Was it A, a Scottish terrier, B, a reindeer, C, a horse, or D, a koala? You're being tactical. Well, you reckon it's worse, better to let them get it wrong than you say? I'm going to say A, which, which I think is the terrier, because it's probably the most plausible. <laughs> well, <laughs> it would fit into a submarine, yeah. quite, but no, it's not the right answer. Oh, okay. The tactics work this time, because we were also thinking A. <laughs> yeah. Now, which so, are we going to choose? But now we realise. <laughs> yes. So are we allowed the choice again? A koala again? might Ray fit. Dear horse yeah. or koala? Okay, go for it. Well, on the basis that 
yeah. we think it will also fit, and we're not sure the others will. We're going to go D koala. Do you think submarines have a large supply of eucalyptus leaves on board for feeding them? They, they, they could feed, do. They, I mean, they don't need much feeding, really. They spend their time asleep. Actually, no, the answer's reindeer, because submarines have a lot of moss on board, don't they? It was a reindeer <laughs> called Pollyanna, who was a gift from a Soviet, na Soviet Union naval admiral. Pollyanna apparently adapted well to life on board and lived out the rest of her life in a zoo. <laughs> so, the reindeer from Murmansk or wherever. Rejected by her friends and family. <laughs> now, at home, did they get straight to reindeer well, or did they have If we non meet Victoria <laughs> as our answer giver, we did very well and we got it straight away. If we go by our collective methodology, uh, or methodology, uh, we didn't do so well. We've kind of evenly split between A, B and C. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we have it. So, six. Oh. Did, you, uh, did you put the point on there? Uh, no. Oh, no, nobody I... got it, did they? No. No, no. that's <laughs> why you didn't. I have two home hit uh, double figures yet on their points. Um, we're, we're working that one out. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> On that number crunching away. Do you know, it all falls down by the fact that I haven't been keeping tabs on it either. So, <laughs> typical. Yeah, right. Shall we have some more questions, yes, Dave? Please. What have we got? Oh, ag Agnetology. Ignorance. Humans have how many senses according to Aristotle? Is it A? Five, B, ten, C, fifteen, or D, twenty? No. Really? How embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's five according to Western, modern yeah. Western folklore, but no. I'm going to say C, with fifteen. Um, no, it was uh, D, twenty. I've taken out two questions there. Yeah, um, Aris, uh, Aristotle identified five. Five. Uh, five. Uh, senses. <laughs> 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 on, All right, okay, it here. says here Aristotle identified five senses sight, smell, taste, and touch. Mm -hmm. oh, That's yeah. four. <laughs> <laughs> Humans can also sense balance, acceleration, and pain, depending on, on who you ask. You've got to have up to 20. Is include your sense of temperature, space, and time. But this so, is according so, to so Aristotle, the question. But it's a question. Oh. And the answer is, why is the answer here is 20? It's clearly, it's got to be five, except it says here, Aristotle identified sight, smell, taste, and touch, which is Dave, four. Do another, do another one. Well, Don't we forget time. that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just I pretend. Think it's so. five, but I think that he put them in a hierarchy and that sight was the top one. Sight, sense, taste, and touch, and hearing. They yeah, left yeah, off yeah, hearing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or do you think we should I give just a bonus question? You can have a point for that. Yeah. yeah. There we are. And minus a point for the um, <laughs> Student Hub Live team for telling us it was 20, <laughs> then saying it was Aristotle and only listing four. Minus two points. Brilliant. Lovely. What okay. did they think at home, HJ? Oh, we're just utterly confused by that one. To so <laughs> we'll spin it again. Yeah. Did you give them a point? You did. Six, I four. I one point for that. Pantology. Pantology. That's life, the universe, and everything, isn't it? Nylon was first commercially used in what product? A. Stockings. B. Fishing line. C. Toothbrush. D. Guitar strings. <laughs> Go. No. What do, you, what do we think on the right? Um, um, yeah. 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 Say B, fishing line. And what do they think at home? Uh, the majority say stockings, and we already know that's wrong. No, um, it's toothbrush. First commercially used in toothbrushes in 1938, then stockings sold commercially in 1940. During World War II, all nylon production in the US was diverted for use in parachutes and parachute cords. So it's no points to anybody. Let's spin it again, please. Yeah. <laughs> Agnetology. Chewing gum, when swallowed, stays in, stays in the digestive system for approximately how long? Is it A, 
seven hours? Is it B, seven days? Is it C, seven months? Or is it D, seven years? What do you think? It's seven days? No. Oh. What do you think? Yeah, I think, it's, I think, I think yeah, I think it, let's say, let's say out. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. We'll say A, seven hours. Well, given the alternatives are seven months or seven <laughs> years, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> um, most chewing gum is indigestible and passes through the digestive system approximately at the same rate as other foods. It says over foods here. I'm sure you would have spotted the typo. <laughs> <laughs> How is Team's home digestion working? I think we're making the comeback. We uh, majority voted for seven hours as well. Good, I so, should uh, hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're getting a bit wiser as this goes on. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, 7 4. Well, at this point in the competition, uh, questions go up to two points for yeah. correct answer. Right. Pantology. Which country did the first human heart trans... In which country <laughs> did the first human heart transplant take place? Is it A, France, B, Canada, C, South Africa, or D, New Zealand? I thought it was in the UK. Oh, okay. But they want to do the same. Yeah. Pat Worth, but the first one in the world was in A, B, C, or D. Come on, somebody. Oh. Else we'll give all the points to Team Home. Yeah, all eight I don't know, I don't think it is. Okay, we'll say A, France. That's purely a guess. That's a wrong guess, but well done for having a go. <laughs> Anybody on the left like to have a go? What were the others again? B which one's Canada? I mean, which left? That's the big one to the north of the <laughs> United States. <laughs> and to the left B of was Greenland. Canada, B was C was Canada. South Africa, and D was New Zealand. Maybe Canada? I don't know. No, what do they think at home? Uh, at home, you reckon C, South Africa, and Stephen says, um, was it to do with Christian Bernard? Well, that was going to be my bonus question, so <laughs> it's a bonus point for Team Home. Aye! <laughs> uh, 3rd of December, 67, in Cape Town. No idea. You don't know, it's all, it's all over the news. It's two years before the moon landing, though. So <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. So, did you give two points for that one? Oh, oh nobody got it. No, two, points to, two points to two Team points Home, to team plus home. a bonus yeah. point. Plus a bonus point. Okay, yeah. well, spin the wheel again, please. Yeah, far too complicated for Team Home. So, still at two points. Agnatology again. Who invented the light bulb? Was it A, Joseph Swan? Was it B, Thomas Edison? Was it... No. No, it's not. No. <laughs> we went, no. Like, Bob, we can't hear you on this side of the table. <laughs> it's not B. It's, it's, so, OK. <laughs> um, it is not B. Yeah. So, full question to the um, predators. It was A, Thomas, A, Joseph Swan, B, Thomas Edison, C, Alessandro Volta, or D, Warren de la Rue? I don't think it's C because he invented the battery. Yeah. So do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Go for A. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just guess. Yeah. It was yeah. It's one yeah. Of those two, so. Um. Do we have to buzz? Let's buzz anyway. Uh, we'll say A. Swan. And what does Team Home think, HJ? Uh, Victoria reckons Volta. Uh, C. Most of us, the majority, did say B though. Thomas Edison. So, um, well. Victoria's doing engineering, so she might well know. <laughs> well, no, she's wrong. Ah. Um, <laughs> well, it's just one of these tricky ones because it was invented several times. But the answer here is Warren de la Rue. I didn't know this. Warren de la Rue enclosed a filament in a vacuum tube in 1840. However, the cost of his platinum filament made it, in, made it expensive. In 1850, that's ten years later, Joseph Swan developed a more efficient design using carbonised paper filaments... Edison submitted the first commercial light bulb patent in 1879. 
Does more that really design. mean he invented it? No. <laughs> it's 39 <laughs> years later. Yeah. Can, can I, can I um, say some... Can I t um, get bonus points for more things that Thomas Edison did not invent? <laughs> <laughs> what, like a space the shuttle? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like the phonograph <laughs> and the um, um, cinema camera, both of which he is credited with inventing, and he claimed to have invented. Did and neither of which he did. Is he very well, good at filing patents then? Yes, he was. <laughs> also very good at nicking other people's ideas. Mm. He's a tremendously good businessman. What you're doing there, Rob, you see, is you're several points behind and you're eating into your time, <laughs> which you need badly <laughs> for more questions to catch up. <laughs> so you don't get a bonus. Spin the wheel, please. Addison needs to do our course on plagiarism and open them, doesn't he? <laughs> we don't like that. Epistemology. Epistemology. So your next epistemological question. In 2010, the government of Ghana increased the salaries of police officers as part of an effort to reduce bribery. What happened? Bribery was A, eliminated, B, it decreased, C, it stayed the same, or D, it increased? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon that was this. <laughs> we were going to say D went, it increased. Yeah. It did. Oh. oh. Hard luck. A split second. Yeah. Did you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, knew? I knew by analogy with other psychological experiments where they make you pay a fine and you actually do the thing more because you feel um, as though you can because you paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> The study. Oh, does that mean I'm going to keep going to more and more speed awareness classes? <laughs> um, right, so that's two points. Yeah, and at home, HJ? Uh, Davin guessed uh, D as well, it increased. Um, we were a bit split on this one, so I'm, I'm not sure really. If we're being honest, do we really deserve a point? I don't know. Well, I think you should ask yourselves yeah. that. Yeah. OK, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we right. go. OK, so we're on 9 for Dave, and we've got about uh, 15 minutes. Three points at stake now for the question. Mm. Epistemology well. again. The three points. Who was the longest-serving Prime Minister of the United Kingdom? Is it A, Margaret Thatcher, B, Robert Walpole, C, Winston Churchill, or D, William Gladstone? Yeah, yeah do uh, we're going to say D, William Gladstone. No. Nope. <laughs> it was Robert Walpole. Uh, Three points. I, yes. And I think um, it depends whether you count consecutive terms or not. I think Gladstone may have served more terms, but not consecutively. Uh, more years altogether. But... Oh, you got that right, didn't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah. well, anyway, you've got the right answer. Um, Walpole, representing the Whigs, served 20 years and 314 days, from 1721 to 1742. Shortest serving Prime Minister was George Canning, only 119 yes. days. Yes. Has Boris exceeded that yet? Yes, he has. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> now then, um, you could win this if you get another one right, because the score's so, are nine, nine, seven, seven. Spin, the, spin the wheel. <laughs> Don't run at home, all right, HJ? More well, epistemology. Well, epistemology. <laughs> oh, yeah. In May 1980, the World Health Organization declared the world and all its people's freedom... There's an apostrophe missing from this, by the way. Hang on, did they write the questions? No! <laughs> but, no, no. But, but if it, appears, it might appear the same on They're the widgets. They're more interested in the errors in the questions. <laughs> declared the world and all its people's freedom from which disease? A, rabies, B, smallpox, C, rubella. I think it was smallpox. It was indeed smallpox. Yay! Three points. <laughs> oh, I say. Oh, oh, oh. has taken the um, Apollonians into the lead. Did they have time to guess at smallpox? Not really. We're <laughs> still guessing. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, That's well. all we want to know. Oh, dear. <laughs> Zoology. Okay, I'm going to keep it at three points to the end of the competition now. So <laughs> play hard, everybody. No more second chances. Pandas are a part of which animal order? 
Is it A, Chiroptera, B, Carnivora, C, Folidota, or D, Ketartiodactyla? Ketartiodactyla. C, and they can't remember how to pronounce the word. Yeah. Uh, Folidota. No. But... Chiroptera, Carnivora, Folidota, or Ket Artiodactyla? That's supposed to be the pause, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, D. Uh, no. What do they think at home? We're guessing B at home, Carnivora. Yeah, that's three points to Team Home. That's the right answer. Um, um, OK. Uh, Chiroptera are mainly bats. Carnivora, the most diverse animal orders, including uh, comprising meat eaters. Um, Folidota, protective scales covering their skin, and Ketari, it's spelt differently in two bits of. <laughs> Ketartiodactyla are a classification of hoofed animals. Although their dart consists mostly of bamboo, pandas are part of the order Carnivora. Ph physiologically, they're, they're able to meet, eat, to eat meat. Um, okay. Um, bonus question. Name a living example of the Folidota. A pangolin. A pangolin. One point oh, for yeah. pangolin. <laughs> no, it's the bonus no. point. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, another bonus. Where in the wild would you find um, a pangolin today? Is it Madagascar? Not. <laughs> the you may or may. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <a submarine>. <laughs> <laughs> it says it Africa and Southeast Asia. I don't know if your African range extends into Madagascar, but it probably does. But you're winning anyway. <laughs> anyway, that was a second bonus, so I won't quite give you that. You may well be right. Maybe Team Home can yeah. do a bit of Googling and see if pangolins occur. <laughs> In Madagascar, and if so, that would be a bonus if point. They were to bonus turn point. Their search well, on. Yeah, if they were to turn yeah, their yeah. search engines <laughs> on. They haven't been up already at all. Um, okay, right. oh, 10 10. We're on even. Whoa. So Team Home are probably on like 48 <laughs> or something. <laughs> 10 minutes to go. That's epistemology. What is the American equivalent of the quaver? You know what the answer you know, is. You need you to know, know the letter. I've got to know whether it's A, B, C, or D. Because they're joking about whether it's going to be a crisp or a French fry or something. Or, is it A, a quarter note, B, a sixteenth note, C, an eighth note, or D, a half note? <laughs> what, what do you think A is, Anna? Um, a quarter note. No, a, a, a quaver's not a quarter note. No, it's an eighth note. Which is what? B. A B is a sixteenth note. Is it? No. The correct answer is an eighth note. Yes, it is. But B, which is what you held up, uh, is a sixteenth note. All oh, right, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't give you. Well, that. It's, not fair, it's not fair for me to answer. <laughs> <laughs> got a moon question or whatever it was. Yeah. It would have been perfectly fair. You hung back to let them. <laughs> so it's still ten all. Spin the wheel. This is a very crucial question coming up. Another epistemology. Yeah. What does the R in R-A-M, RAM, stand for? Is it A, random? A, random. Yes. Oh, uh, It's random access memory we're talking about. Do they have time to do that at home? No. <laughs> Did they also get the eighth note thing? Uh, they did. It turns out a couple of us in the... 
on team home are uh, musicians. Eva plays the violin. Oh, so okay. we've got a nice team here. I know I can call up in the future as well. I guess. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> any, any news on the pangolin in Madagascar? No. <laughs> All right. They're probably talking about cabbage cake again. 10.13, Ten very little time to go. Let's spin the wheel. You need to draw level now, uh, Predators. Is that... Pantology. Oh, pantology. Yeah, so I was going to do... Um, I wasn't going to do anything. Who first <laughs> discovered penicillin? Was it A, Louis Pasteur? Was it B, Joseph Lister? Was it C, Edward Jenner, or D, Alexander Fleming? Yeah, that's yes. what I'm listening as well. We said D, Alexander Fleming. Correct. Oh, yes. You see, we Great knew questions. that. So we like... thought that was too obvious. Yeah. Yeah. That's too obvious. Okay. Thirteen yeah. points all. Did they know Alexander Fleming at home? It turns out well. They did, I didn't, but uh, yeah, majority went with Alexander okay. Fleming, so we're keeping up on the points. Uh, Tal has counted 27 points for Team Home so far, which uh, we'll, we'll get that verified somehow. That's slightly more than twice as many as... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, maybe we're, we're we not so accurate, but, um, no. you know, it, it works. We're happy with that as it stands. I bet you way. are. <laughs> Rather like Liverpool, it seems that they've won the competition before it's over. So spin the wheel. Now, the Apollonians need to get this right to draw level, and it's Pantology. What was Nintendo's first product? Was it A, playing cards? A, playing cards. Yes. Oh. Ooh. It says here, Nintendo also had ventures in taxis, love hotels, a TV network and a food company. Ah, <laughs> uh, OK. Well, that's equalised. No, no, no. Oh, no. It's taking the, oh, the Apollonians into the lead. Three point lead. Three point lead. Oh, I mean, we've lost, tra I've lost <laughs> track. So yeah, they were level, now you're in the no, lead. So no the lead's changed sides. OK, spin the wheel again. Agnotology? Yep. The vomitorium is the word given to what place in ancient Rome? Is it A, a temple, B, a latrine, C, an entrance to an amphitheatre, or...? Yeah, it's the exit from an amphitheatre. Yes. <laughs> it's a passage below the seats in an amphitheatre designed to allow large crowds, crowds to enter and exit a venue rapidly. The word derives from the Latin vomere, to spew forth. Volcanoes, there you go. Oh, don't say that. That's why You're volcanoes spew. Volcanoes spew. And is it, is it true, Jess, that the binge and purge cycle of Romans while feasting is a common misconception? I think it did happen, just not as frequently as horrible histories or similar would have believe. sources might be. So, six-point lead now. We Ooh. do. Did they know what a vomitorium, vomitarium uh, was? Victoria did. I think she's drawing on uh, her engineering as well, design and things like that. Uh, she said vomitorium is an entrance, and she did find it out a long time ago when she was being amused by the name. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, spin that wheel. We might have, may have time for two questions. Yeah, let's try and get them quick. Pantology. Pantology. Hubert Cecil Booth invented what in 1901? Was it A, the electric razor? Was it B, the vacuum cleaner? Was it C, the electric fan? Or D, the portable camera? I don't, I don't get it. Okay. Um, vacuum B, cleaner. Anna? Vacuum cleaner, <laughs> correct. He also designed Ferris wheel suspension bridges and factories. Very quickly, HJ, did they get that at home? No. <laughs> uh, OK. 16.19, let's spin the wheel. OK. This may be the last question. I've not any signals yet. Pantology. What was the first manned flight around the moon? Was it A, Apollo 11? Was it B, Apollo 8? Was it... I think it's B, Apollo 8. Correct. Oh. <laughs> Shane, were you... Did you know that? Yeah. Oh. Yep. 
Um, bonus question. Oh, you, you, oh we're not level. Oh, bonus there. question. What happened to the crew of Apollo 1? They um, were lost in a fire on the launch pad. Oh, on the launch pad. Yeah, one point there. One point. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. Spin the wheel. Yeah. Oh, one thing at a time. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> What a bit much for three o'clock on a Monday. The epistemology. Epistemology. What is the largest island in Canada? Is it A, Newfoundland? Is it B, Baffin Island? Is it C, Ellesmere Island? Or D, Victoria Island? You've got to get one to win. We'll say A, Newfoundland? No. I think it's Baffin Island. Yeah. Um, ba 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 Baffin Island is the fifth largest island in the world after Madagascar, where pangolins may or may not <laughs> <laughs> We've got one minute to go, Dave. So Final one question. more question. For ten points. For ten points. Oh, no. <laughs> Etymology. Etymology. The word, the word ombudsman comes from which language? Is it A, Dutch? Is it B, Swedish? Is it C, German? Or D, Polish? Ombudsman. What was it? Which choice was it? A. A, Dutch. And what would you say if you had a chance to say? That makes it more exciting, I'd have said you would say Swedish if you had a chance. And what would Team Home say if they had a chance? Uh, Alex and Libby reckon be Swedish as well. That seems to be the majority agreement at the moment. And Eva as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not It is, in fact, Swedish. Ooh. So, as uh, 10 points to Home and 10 points to the Apollonians. <laughs> Is, is, is that or is that not the last question? That is all we have time for, I'm afraid. Oh. So, very well played, um, Predators, but I'm sorry we're going to have to say goodbye to you. Okay. Um, we look forward to seeing the Apollonians again <laughs> in the next round. <laughs> and well played, Team Home, and thank you for watching. Thank you. And thank you so much, Dave. Thank you for everyone. And thank you for Team Home. A much better scoring system than in previous um, <laughs> quizzes, but still not one I'm convinced about. Um, anyway, we're going to have a short break now. Um, you can go and make your cabbage cake if you'd like to and send us a picture of that later. We're back on air at 5 o'clock tonight until 8 o'clock. We've got a really lovely programme this evening, um, including the Open University Students Association. We're going to be meeting the graduate school for that Bake Your Cake um, research uh, competition. So they're going to bring cake and tell us all about that. That's going to be super. We've also got colleagues from the Open University Law School doing a fantastic session about firearms. So join us tonight. You can see the whole programme on the Student Hub Live website and enjoy the rest of your afternoon and I hope you can tune in later. See you then.